introducing our latest fish. It is Bothriolepis, which is a freshwater placoderm. And oh, do I need to explain what a placoderm is? One sec. We've only really talked about Dunkleosteus on the channel before. That's probably the most famous placoderm. It's the amazing Devonian armored fish with its scary, like, bear trap face kind of thing. Um, but because this mod is tailored for us hipster fossil fish fans, and by that I mean exclusively tailored for me, we don't have Dunkleosteus, but instead we have some nice, more obscure ones, starting with Bothriolepis. It has these amazing armoured fins, which I think they've recreated perfectly. Um, obviously, looking at this thing, it was not a pursuit predator like Nucleosteus. Its morphology suggests that it was instead a bottom feeder, sort of scootling around on the ground, um, in the water obviously still. But we have these amazing 3D fossils of their armour, which I will have to throw on screen for you to see, because uh, they just look awesome, which is why this one looks so good, I guess. Uh, what else? Oh, 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 I know, I know. You might recognize Bothriolepis if you have seen the amazing Studio Ghibli movie Ponyo, which is incredible. It's basically about a guy with long hair ranting about Paleozoic fish children, which is kind of like the story of my life. <laughs> oh, the aquarium is looking so good. Even if no one watches these videos, I'm having a great time, so this is fine. Maybe I won't even edit this and upload it. Who cares? <laughs> anyway, our next fish, I'm going to have to build a really big tank for it. Um, I think it's going to be very similar to the other one, so I'm not going to show you it. I'm just going to jump straight ahead. Ta-da! I'm not 100% happy with this, to be completely honest with you. I tried to add some like corals and stuff, but... Oh, the thing is, I don't think it's possible to make a tank for this fish that is humane. <laughs> no matter how big or decorated it is. Fortunately, it's only a game, I guess, but... <laughs> still feel a bit bad. Anyway, our next fish is Titanictus, and oh my god, it's huge. Oh, I accidentally spawned two of them. Oh dear. They do kind of seem to be phasing in and out of reality a little bit there. Hmm. So this is another Placoderm, but again, unlike Dungleosteus, it is not a terrifying deadly predator, but rather a fairly harmless suspension feeder floating around the ocean, mindlessly eating whatever plankton drifts in its mouth. Live in the dream. It's amazing just how many times fishes and other marine animals have converged on giant suspension feeder as an ecology. Like, arthropods kicked it off way back in the Cambrian, ray-finned fishes got into it with the Elidzichthys and Yvonorexes in the Jurassic, and nowadays we've got baleen whales and basking sharks. I really love how marine animals converge on this because it just works, and it's this fantastic idea of evolutionary convergence. I'll be honest, I'm quite disturbed by how crowded this tank looks. I mean, there's only two of them. I might just, like, give them a sneaky call real quick. Yeah, one sec. Alright, that didn't take too long, so I think we'll add one more tank for today. Um, and I think we'll just replicate the Conodont tank. I think that should look more than okay. So, our last fish. Alright, so we're going to put them in here. And Oh man, it actually, it'd be really cool at some point to build, like, a like a behind-the-scenes area back here, so it's kind of easier to access these tanks. I don't know, let's file that away for later. So this is Acanthodes, and Acanthodes belongs to a group of animals called Acanthodians, which means spiny sharks. And like everything in this mod, they are super weird, but also super interesting. Okay, so 420 million years ago, in the Devonian, which is where we visited in the last maybe episode, or maybe this episode, who knows, um, cartilaginous fishes, so that's your sharks and your rays and whatnot, diverged from the bony fishes, so that's your coelacanths and your goldfishes and basically everything else. And this is a really important point in evolutionary history, but we don't fully understand what happened or how it happened. One of the biggest clues, though, is in this tank right here. Acanthodes are basically a very early stem cartilaginous fish, which means it has traits in common with both living sharks and bony fishes, if that makes sense. To, to be honest, it actually has more in common with um, bony fishes than actual sharks. They're quite little, as you can see, and believe it or not, Acanthodes is actually one of the largest bony sharks, um, and also the majority of them lived in freshwater environments as well. Oh, and Acanthodes is also kind of unique among spiny sharks because it has a fairly decent skeleton, meaning that for once we actually have some relatively nice fossils of it. And I say that because, like, that's not kind of garish. Like, considering that most spiny shark fossils kind of look like roadkill, <laughs> they're pretty cool, but it still takes a lot of time to actually get any information out of their fossils sometimes. Like Titanicthes, Acanthodes was also a filter feeder, 
And it also gets extra cool fossil bonus points for being found in a three-tier trophic chain. Oh my god, what does that mean? Well, you know those like Russian nesting dolls? So you got like the big doll and the little doll and the little doll and the little doll inside? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, there's a fossil of an Acanthodes in the stomach of an amphibian in the stomach of a shark. How good is that? That's amazing. Um, yeah, they're pretty neat and a massive pain to paleontologists everywhere. I literally cannot help myself. I keep pausing to like review the recording, but then I keep decorating. I'm going to maybe do a bit more decorating off screen and then rejoin you for the next episode, I think. <laughs> All right. I'll see you next time. Bye.